to see you again. I hope sound is okay. This was from last time. We will switch topic today. We will look into something else. But uh, just for the record, yeah, this is, oh, it's the wrong position. You can see what happened, right? We talked about this, this position. I think it was something like, what was it like? The knight was on d4, the bishop was on b3. Let's see if I can bring this up the way it was. It was like this, right? I think. And uh, it was black to play. Let's see, black moves next. Like that. So I think I was ba basically asking you when they take on b3, should we take with a c pawn or with the a pawn? Uh, yeah, and it was very natural for most of us to take this way. But then we concluded that black would play like this. And there would be tactical issues here, right? Something with a check on c5 and and so on. So in the end, we said c takes b3. That was the right uh, choice here. Oh, sorry, is something wrong with my with my settings? Um, let me see very quickly if I can get this right. Something like that. Um, yeah, it should be okay now. Yeah, so that's what we were saying that we should take with the c pawn instead. So that if, uh, yeah, you didn't miss anything. We just arrived here, Sartak, no problem. We were just recap, recapping what happened last time. And this is the position that where I was asking everybody for the right way to continue. Let me just very quickly double check that everybody is on the right track here. All right, you get for this mission 20 seconds, okay? Good luck, guys. What did White play here? Exactly, JM Chess, L, Daniel, Wyatt. Gordon, legendary goat, Ryan the greatest. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, and some more. Arc KDK. Okay, a lot of people got it right. Uh, JM Chess, one of the fastest here. So please go ahead, JM Chess. What did you play? I messed up the order, says Sarthak. So the big point of taking in this way was that we would be able to. Uh, use our queen in a smart way, right? Did I pick the... Oh, sorry, sorry. JM Chess. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Yeah, all right, JM. Go for it. Yeah, exactly. Queen C1. That's the key move here because we are actually starting some kind of counterattack now. And if they take, they get badly punished. In this game, it was white who was mated, but in this variation, it's black who is mated instead. So, yeah, black would have to play... Yeah, thanks, JM Chess. Black would have to play something else here after Queen C1. I think it was something like queen d7 and it was still highly unclear. Uh, yeah, please don't take on f4 because then you get executed here sooner or later. Uh, so many tactics in this crazy line. Um, I don't know, maybe g3 here and take on g5 or something like that. Yeah, it, it's strange variation. For those of you who are interested in opening theory, this came up like um, like that, right? It, this was the Ray Lopez, the... Deferred stainage, I think you call this, like that. So if you play this with white pieces uh, and you play castles and you enter this stuff, uh, make sure that you're well prepared because in this game that we looked at, white was not well prepared and they, en they ended up in big troubles. Something like this. And the computer was saying that that uh, black is better, but that white is better, but it was a big mess, this whole, this whole variation. Yeah, all right. This is what we looked at last time, but now we will turn the page and we will look into something new and this topic i call it uh, thinking in both directions so anyone what do you think that means thinking in both directions w what am i trying to say with that what's the what's the point of that uh... aha strategic and tactical says hollow blade exactly 100 percent correct that's what we're saying i would like to bring up bring up some exercises where some challenges for you where we will quiz from the very beginning, and I won't tell you if it's tactics or strategy. I'll write that here. Uh, okay, playing on both sides of the board. Yeah, that's important also. But what we will do here, uh, I will bring up some personal questions here. How old are you? How old are you? Maybe you can ask yourself uh, these questions on, the, on some other occasion, right? And we can focus on the chessboard. Uh, everybody, I think, can contact everybody here. Somehow you can find out the email of every person here and you can chat on your own time but not here in this uh, place all right so i will bring up some uh, positions without telling you uh, telling you whether uh, tactics or strategy 
uh, is involved. All right? I won't tell you. You will have to find out yourselves what's going on in the world. And you will see if there is a tactical solution or there is a strategical solution or there is something maybe in between. All right? So uh, I won't tell you. You'll have to figure out yourself. Let's take our first example. Uh, very strong Grandmaster with the white pieces and also with black. Next one is still tactics, says awesome South Trek. All right, we will see. It's your move here, guys. I will quiz you for the first. Um, let's see if we can get this right. I'll quiz you for the first four moves here in this example. Okay, I don't think it will be very difficult, so you get one minute for this. Aha. So, yeah. Maybe tactics, maybe strategy, we don't know. You'll have to figure out yourself. Is there anything tactical here? Uh, maybe. Is there anything strategical? Possibly. You'll have to check yourself. Okay, interesting move by Hollow, RK and Smart Goldfish. Unexpected pawn sacrifice. Uh-huh. Yeah, we will look into that. Very brave, uh, brave decision. Uh-huh. A lot of people want to play like that. Uh, but that's not how Esipenko played, <laughs> for what it's worth. Yeah, we will talk about that. We will talk about that. It's an interesting idea that you have, but I have a few questions to ask them. So we, we, will, we will look into this. So who got closest? Let's see. Who was closest on this occasion? Uh, Tiger Saki is definitely very close. Uh, and is there anyone else who is so, so close? No, nobody got to move four, but uh, Tiger Sahi got to move two. So please go ahead, Tiger. And I think you have also noticed which is the right idea. So uh, people going to spam the chat after the quiz. Yeah, don't spam the chat. Yeah, well, it's, it's not for that. It's a place where you and me, we can communicate and so on. If, if you want to talk about how old you are and what's your rating and blah, 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 do that somewhere else, please. Yeah, please be a little respectful, all right? So, uh, Taigo Sahi says, uh, which was the move? Um, I'm losing my, my mind here. Queen C1, exactly. That's what uh, Grandmaster Esipenko played. We're talking strategy here. You can see that, yeah, if anyone doesn't understand what's going on, just look at White's next move here, according to uh, Taigo Sahi's solution. Yeah, Queen C1 is nice. I agree. Yeah, I'm not surprised that uh, he played at Esipenko. Okay, uh, this is what uh, Taigo Sahi proposed. And it's not what he played, but it's perfectly fine also. You could have played this straight away. He started here. Esipenko started with f3, chasing away the knight, now that he has the pawn protected, right? So there was some tactic to this move also, queen c1, as you can see. Yeah, now after knight g5, Dre played knight g5, and now uh, Esipenko continued with bishop a3. Bishop takes, queen takes. You can see that the queen gets rather active at this part of the board. Knight f7 was played in the game, and white simply played here f4. Yeah, this face the stone wall. Sometimes you can do exactly the same thing. If you do that, make sure to keep one knight, all right? Keep one knight on the board and try to keep them, them with the bishop on e8. And you have different plans here. One plan might be later on to play a little on the queen side. Some kind of, of queen side attack. From black strong knight on e4 to white on e5. Yeah, definitely black uh, knight is not so strong anymore. I think if you play bishop a3 on move 2, this is not a mistake. I guess simply simply what uh, Esipenko didn't want to allow us to, that black would have this in the pocket. But I don't know exactly where, where they could use it, though. Um, yeah, I'm just guessing what, what could be the difference here. Could you play g5 here? Probably not, no. Probably not g5. There is something with queen e7 also. Yeah, what would be the difference? Very good question. I can't really say that this is wrong. Um, Strategy sometimes very often leaves room for more than one solution. Knight e4, can you play that? Not, not, with, not right now, right? Or I think I don't understand really what you mean, if I can take it then. Yeah, when there are two options, that hard to play both. Yeah, if knight e2, I guess rook d1. So this is maybe what he wanted to avoid, but I can't really see what would be the problem with this. Maybe there was some other way of this. Yeah, dc I'll just take back. So I, I don't see the point of this for, for, for black, honestly. Um, I guess he was just happy to have it uh, inserted, this move f3, and not having to calculate later, maybe. Uh, or, or maybe he was saying that, all right, if I do this, maybe black can wait and take back with the knight. Uh, or, or maybe they could play something like, I don't know, like like g5. 
Although in that case, White would play f3. So that's not a very good argument from, from me. <laughs> so confusing. Honestly, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So I think that's also fine what Tiger Saki said with bishop a3 at move 2. But I also like what he played. So it's up to you guys. But in any case, I'm convinced this is the best move. Because one, we prepare bishop a3 trading off their good bishop. And two, we get ready to play f3 now that this pawn is protected. Some of you wanted to play f3 yourselves at this point. So that's maybe some kind of tactical solution. But I, I couldn't really understand what's coming up next here. Because I can take this pawn and if you go to h1, I can go knight f2, right? So I guess you would have to play king h2. I think you were hoping to trap me, right, with bishop c1. But uh, knight f2 anyway. Yeah, maybe knight f2 is just hitting the queen. Uh, as simple as that. This is a nice tactic also, right? Knight d2, you're even threatening to take on d3. Now we're talking tactics, right? Now we're talking tactics, but it's white who has been fooled here, I think, in tactics. Bishop c1 wins. Wh where, where would bishop c1 win? Sorry, that, that's interesting to me. You say after this, after that, or in at, at which moment? I don't understand. Here, this wins? Uh, hardly possible to believe that. Yeah. Or knight f... Yeah, what, knight... This is check, by the way. Uh, this is check, right? So uh, if you take, I can. I, I think I can still do this, right? And I, I think I'm, I'm the one coming out on top here. So, yeah. All right, no problem. No, no hard feelings here. But uh, <laughs> that would be my piece of advice. Yeah. Uh, Queen c1, very useful move. This trade, you know it in the stone wall. It happens all the time in the stone wall, right? When you play the stone wall, let's, let's see. Let's see very quickly. If you play the stone wall with the white pieces, I mean, facing it with the white white pieces, I mean, so many variations where you do this, right? Where you play. Not that I'm a big expert on the stone wall, but I know that in some lines you do this. Like here, for example, you play b3 and you try to play bishop a3, right? And you have this fancy Petrosian's plan of rerouting the knight like that. And if they play this, I think even some people play bishop b2 and they play queen c1 and bishop a3. So, yeah, not. So difficult. If you like the stone wall, then go one f4. Interesting. Yeah, but maybe if you go one f4, they won't. They can play other things, right? That they can play something like this and try to break with e5, maybe at some point. Anyway, I feel like that's a different story. So we will continue. I hope everybody is happy about what we looked at here. I hope this was uh, clear to everyone. We were basically saying that if uh, White's playing in this position. This is a good move, strategically speaking. It's not about tactics, it's about strategy. We want to trade off their good bishop. I mean, they can, of course, make big efforts to keep the bishop. They would have to play something like this and then bring back the bishop. But yeah, putting the rook on e8, it's not what white us black usually does in this opening. And now you can't bring over the bishop. So this looks ugly for black, I think. The bishop on a3 is also very good. Exactly. I agree with you, L. Definitely. So, yeah. Okay, we should uh, move on then. We should move on. We have some more positions to look at today. So we'll take the next one here. Let's see if I can get this right. Um, okay, this is a much less uh, familiar game. So you can ask yourself, is this tactics or is it strategy? I won't give you the answer, of course. <laughs> You'll have to figure out yourself. But I don't think it's, it's difficult for, for most of you to, to figure out what it is. So you get uh, one minute. Okay, one minute, 15. Yeah, it looks more like tactics, right? It looks more like tactics. More open, more pieces uh, touching each other and uh, attacking possibilities and things like that. So, yeah, probably. <laughs> okay, take your time. Patriots and Ananya, you're taking, you're doing this so fast. There are like five or six candidate moves here, but there is one which is better than the rest. Okay? Uh, and I can give you a hint. Somebody said that you should look at the queen side and on the king side. So my hint to all of you is don't focus only on the on this this part of the board on the on the king side. Focus a little more on the rest of the board. Okay, we have a winner here, Charles Hua. Congratulations, Charles. That's uh, great work. Okay, anyone else was close? Um, wow, I have a user without a name. Oh no, Hollow Blade. Hollow Blade. You are you had an illusion, optical illusion, but else you got it right. I think if you were sitting there at the board, you would notice this in the end, and you would avoid. The optical illusion. Okay, we have more winners. Sarthak, you got it. Heuristic Mind, Legendary Goat. All right. Many winners here, or well, at least four of them. Uh, maybe it was easier for you with tactics, no? Nice. Jelly Bean, that's a fifth winner. Congratulations, Jelly. 
Aha, uh -huh. so please go ahead, Charles. You were the fastest one here. What was your solution? Aha, uh -huh. queen d3. So why is that so important? Why can't we just swing over the rook quickly and attack the pawn on h7? As simple as that. Well, in this case, black would be able to bring in the rook like that and protect in this way. And that's how the game went, by the way. The game went like that. I'm not completely familiar with these players, but I know that Pushkov is grandmaster from Russia, probably. Uh, Black was okay in this game, and they went on to win. Some kind of French uh, Taras, I think this is, this is, right? French Taras, where you took on F6 at some point. So, not completely convincing, but what a smart move that Charles came up with. Because now, as you can see, we are ta targeting this pawn, but we are also targeting the bishop. What about Queen H5 move 1? Yeah, we're talking flexibility, right? From D3, the Queen is doing two things. It's attacking the bishop, and it's also targeting the pawn. If you play Queen H5 on this move, I have a sneaky defense here. Sneaky defense. Anyone? Okay, Hollow Blades saw this already. Of course, you're very fast with these cheap tactics. Rook G8, exactly Hollow. Now if Queen takes, even a blind man can see here what Black will play, right? Exactly. Oh, rook takes, and this is the cheap trick. Okay, White is not forced to take, of course. White could do something else here. But, but I don't think it's healthy for them, right? If I play something like that. Yeah, what do you think, guys? Would we take on... There should be some tactic here, right? Anyone? Rook to 7, simply back home. Home sweet home. Rook to 7, that's a smart move. So if queen takes, now I think we can start our counterattack, right? Queen takes. Is that possible? Let's see. Rook takes, check. King, check. Wow, maybe it is possible. Yeah, we shouldn't do this, right? The king can go that way, I think. Yeah, this is not, not correct by black, right? Or any anyone who can see... If, Further than me, hopefully. Yeah, this might this is maybe not correct. So we can play something else here, maybe with black. Yeah, what else could we play with black here? Uh, yeah, move the bishop. That's one one idea, right? Bishop c6 maybe. Yeah, I think white is white is risking in, in this position. I think so. And they're not even up material. I think white was down a pawn when when we started, so we're equal now. And uh, yeah, black has their fair uh, share of the chances also. Yeah, white is not winning. Also, bishop bishop rook g8 says. Chess art. Yeah, some kind of flexible move. Uh, never in vain to have the rook protected and so on. All right. But if we start with queen d3, the move that Charles was explaining to us, it's a completely different story because now black loses a tempo in the battle for the h7 pawn in the sense that they have to do something about the bishop. So, yeah, I'll have to move my bishop somewhere. Please go ahead, Charles. You had a... Uh, uh, exactly, rook h4. So now I don't make it, though. I don't make it. That's the difference. So they had to play here f5. And now we pick up a pawn, which you were quickly to see here. Queen h3, of course, threat. And after that, we can take on e6 and win a pawn up, and we should be able to win this game. Uh, yeah, maybe I can try something like that, right, Charles? What do you think about this, rook a8? How would you untangle here? I think there is a single, simple way. Oh, queen takes a5. Yeah, that's, that's also possible. Yeah, I was actually just thinking about moving the rook like that, but... Yeah, why not? We have this protected and maybe we can do my move later or something. Black can also not do so much. So. Nice. Yeah, very simple. Exactly, Tori. Queen takes a five. That's a good move. So I'm happy that we agree on this. White had many candidate moves here. We had rook h4. We had queen h5. We have maybe bishop d3. But the best of all, queen d3. Clever move, combining two different ideas. Uh, they didn't play like this in the game, but it would have been very effective. All right. Time for our next challenge. Uh, let me see if I can bring this one up. Uh, anyone want to raise their hand? You can also write in the chat if there is any urgency or something, some variation that you want to look at. We can look at it. Okay. We're in some kind of late middle game, early end game. I would like to know what uh, White should play here. Oh, a lot of uh, yeah video uh, interaction that are interesting. Anyway, yeah, we will... Uh, Let's see how far I can I can do this. Okay, I think that's enough. So you get one minute thirty. Don't send me the moves. Don't send me the moves, please. Is this tactics? Is it strategy? Or is it something in between? That's the question for you guys. Yeah, you're right in this position. Some kind of Catalan battle where uh, you have a nice uh, initiative, but uh, you would like to. Convert it into something more. Uh -huh. Okay, RKDK. I think I go queen a8 on that move. Queen a8 is my answer. 
if you play like that. I understand your move perfectly, but maybe I can go queen a8 and try to defend the knight, okay? Uh, Patriots, interesting move, maneuvering move, okay. Uh, oh, that's a frontal move. Yeah, e4, I think I go knight 5f6, right? Knight 5f6. So, uh, knight d2 was proposed here by some, by some people. Interesting, knight d2. I didn't think about that. Uh, may I go h6? Where are, you, where are you putting your queen, by the way, if I play h6? I'm just curious about the destiny of your queen. Okay. Um, queen d2. Interesting move. Okay, Adi Chess, you're basically a winner here. Yeah, Adi Chess uh, basically got it. L008 got the whole sequence. But Adi Chess is definitely close. We have Knight takes d7. Yeah, that's somebody who thought it was pure tactics. <laughs> uh, okay, JM Chess, you also got it. Please go ahead, uh, L, and show us how does uh, White continue here. Queen c1, they say it's difficult to move the pieces backwards. But it was not difficult for Jesper Tivo in this game. You can see the Danish Grandmaster is trying to infiltrate with the Queen. This is a typical weakness in the Catalan. Right now, it's not properly defended. If you play instead queen d2, as some people were saying, I like this move, of, like uh, visually speaking, it looks very nice. But I think black can play queen a8. But I'm happy to hear any opinions here. If somebody can tell me that white is winning or something, we should look into it. No? But I, I can't see exactly how you continue here. And I have... Oh, e4. Yeah, e4, I will play knight f6. Now you should take care of your e pawn also, right? Knight e5. Yeah, that's like he played in the game, but this isn't the worst version. So, yeah, I don't. I think I'm not brave enough to take this pawn. <laughs> Maybe I should, but yeah, I, I won't. I'll just play king g8. Yeah, not to make things too complex. Maybe I can go this next turn, right? Or was there something better? Not here, coach. What is not here? Knight e4. Oh, you said something else? I, I didn't understand. Not knight e5 here, I hope. Th then I think I'm mating. No, or... Or what are we talking about? Knight e5 before e4. Yeah, knight before before e4, that's here. Don't do that. Whatever you do, don't play that. Knight e7. Wow, that's an interesting move. Okay. Uh, knight e7, you want to take and take on d7. Wow. That's a challenging move. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, can I play knight f6? I think I can do this, right? I can do this, and if you take twice, I have my mating idea again. Yeah, I'm extremely fortunate in this position. Knight takes, knight takes, and you cannot take because I give you I give mate in the end, right? E4, and I will play knight f6. This will just end up in simplification, don't you think? Or am I missing something? Knight takes e7, queen takes e7, queen d8. Oh, was that also possible? Knight takes e7, knight takes e7, queen takes e7, queen d8. Well, I don't believe in this. You, you, you're giving away a pawn here for free. Uh, yeah, okay, we're losing track here a little. Somebody else wanted to say something. Please uh, help me sort out this. Uh... H4 was my move, as my move. H4. Are we talking about H4 here? Queen C2 says Tori Chess. Here, Queen C2. Interesting. Yeah, to infiltrate maybe or something. Uh, what can I play against that? Knight F6 is always on my mind, but this guy is hanging. So maybe Queen B7? Is, is that... Is that possible, maybe? Oh, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, that's what I thought also. We keep track of these squares and hope to play it solid here. Yeah, I, I think that uh, Black is under some slight pressure, but I think they can also save save this, no? They can save this. Should we go back? Queen e4 says tactical magician. Can you really play that tactical? I think I have a tactic here, knight f4. Or no? Or am I missing something? Um, Seems like it's okay, no? So I think we should go back and look at what L had to say. So please go ahead, L. You can do this in a smarter way. Uh, instead of queen d2, we play queen c1. I hope everybody understands this. It's some kind of tactical move, but I will also say it's strategical. No, we want to enter with the queen. I think we have a concrete threat of e4, which means that I, I don't have time for this on this occasion because I'm hanging, hanging the bishop, right? So... Yeah, what did they play in the game? Yeah, maybe it's stra tactical, says Tori. Yeah, something like that. Like in the middle, like in the gray zone between tactics and strategy. Yeah, whatever you wish to call it. Queen the 8 was played in the game. Please continue. Uh, exactly. Um, 
what's the name of the student? L008. Exactly. Queen C6. Now Black is in big trouble. They played Knight F6. And we have a nice move here. The move that you talked about before, some of you. But now it's extremely strong because at this occasion, I definitely have to play like that. <coughs> but now I'm exposed to this move also. King F8. And uh, yeah, Knight E5. That's how he played. Black actually resigned in this position. They resigned here. Yeah, they say you never win a game by resigning, but this one is hard to win anyway. Um, White has a lot of threats. We can definitely not take like that. Then we get mated, I think, right, uh, L? Exactly, and double, double threat. So you would have to play something like Bishop D8 here. Uh, and here you can pick up a pawn, for example, uh, if you like L. Or is there something better? Yeah, it's up to you, Well, I think it was a little early to, to, to resign in this game. I would continue for a few more moves. But this is a very good move that L proposes here. King g8, and you can pick up a second pawn here if you like. Exactly. Knight takes, knight takes. Which pawn are we talking about? It's actually not the e pawn, it's the b pawn, right? L will pick up the b pawn now. Take all the pawns. Exactly. Could you take the pawn on b5? I didn't see that. When, you, when did you take that pawn, uh, Kan King Sam? Oh, or what? Oh, there was something. Queen takes d7, knight e7. Queen takes d7, knight e7. Yeah, so we didn't win. Yeah, what did we win here? Yeah, exactly. We, we win two pawns, maybe. Or, or, or is there something better? I don't know. D d yeah, it's a complete disaster for black, I think, this game. Uh, this position. So, yeah, this is what we're talking about, right? Queen takes and take. And yeah, this is too, just too much. Two, two pawns is too much. One pawn can be possible to fight, but two pawns will be too much. All right, so I hope you like this one, guys. Uh, we're talking about improving the position. It's a paradoxical move because the queen was actually well placed on g5, but actually it's even stronger on this side. So look at the whole board. Maybe we're back to this topic of thinking in both directions or thinking at all parts of the board or something like that. Okay, we should get going. Let's take an example by the youngest uh, grandmaster in the world, all right? Youngest grandmaster in the world. I think we had this one in the past, so it will just be a repetition for you. Here we go, you're playing with the white pieces. Please be a little careful with your second move, but I'm convinced that we had this one before. Uh, please be a little careful with the second move, and maybe with the fourth move also, all right? I think that's that's enough. Okay, here we go, 130. You have to find five moves here by Mishra with the white pieces. I'm not saying if it's tactics or strategy, you will have to figure out that yourself. Take your time, uh, chess alt. That's very fast. If you play like that, I'll take, I'll take the and I don't know which tactic you had seen. Okay, we we will come to that. Okay, Sarthak, if I if I take on e4, did you calculate that, uh, Sarthak, if I take on e4? The same goes for JM Chess. I haven't looked at this, but that's the first question I have to ask you, if I can take the pawn. Uh, Charles, you're very, very close. Yeah, definitely. Very, very close. Um, GM, that's in the right spirit, your move. I wonder, GM, if I could play bishop takes g4 there in, in your position. If I could take, try to get three pawns for, for the piece there. Looks interesting. Okay, RKDK, that's our winner. Uh, I guess that's not Mishra hiding behind that handle, RKDK. In any case, that's the right solution. Congratulations. Please go ahead, RKDK. What would you play here with white? Exactly, f4. If you try to look at the benefits of the merits of White's position, you would say that one benefit here is that they have some kind of pawn majority in the center that they would like to push forward. So f4 is a very good move here. Uh, we are not yet telling our opponent if we will go f5 or e5 or something else. We keep that in the pocket while waiting for their next uh, step. Yeah, normal moves. That's probably what Misra thought as well. We're playing normal moves. Let's have a look at what happened in the game. Hakobian played here queen a7. 
we have to protect this pawn in some good way. I think there is only one piece which can do this. Aha, it has to be the queen because the knight is busy defending that pawn. So queen f2 was played in the game. Black played prophylactic retreating move here, rook e7. And here we had to make a choice between these two moves. And RKDK, you made the right choice. Here we go, e5, because if f5, there was a cheap tactic. Anyone? Cheap tactic for black? We will come to that, uh, Pop Fisher. Okay, we will come to that, e5 in the starting position. We will talk about that. Yeah, bishop takes f5, cheap tactic. You see what I'm talking about here. Queen takes, we take on d4, and we hit the bishop. If pawn takes, we can take twice on e1, and in the end, as you can see, it's the same story. Black will take and pick up the bishop. So don't play f5, please. Mishra noticed this, of course. He played e5 instead. Black played knight e5. You have two ways to improve your knight here, uh, RKDK. It's better to go to that side. I guess if you go to this side, yeah, was, the, was this possible? No, because then they have the same trick here again. Yeah, cheap tactics all over the place. Knight takes, queen takes, queen takes. Unfortunately, we cannot defend like this because we're hanging the queen and else there is something going on there. So yeah, some kind of tactical... Uh, what can you say? T tactical chaos here on the board, but black is probably not worse here. Something with f5 maybe coming up also. So, oh, queen e3. Can you play that also? I guess it's the same story then. Uh, oh, if you play queen e3, I take on e3 in some way. I don't know. Maybe I take like this first and I take that. And... I don't know. Can you avoid these moves uh, coming up next? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Maybe you have some fancy counter attack or something, but I have this also, right? This looks very promising for black, I think, because they're not even down material. And they're about to get back material. So, yeah, rookie two, maybe. You're right. Yeah, maybe we can we can continue to analyze this. You go rookie two. Maybe I can go bishop f5 first, right? I hope I'm not blundering something here. But I would start with that move, and then I would try to play d5. Uh, rook e1. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's going on here. Those of you who are fast with tactics, tell me if this works. Maybe that is like knight f6 and rook takes e5, something like that. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe actually black, white is fine here. Yeah, white is holding, definitely. <clears throat> maybe we shouldn't play bishop f5 then. <coughs> so yeah, maybe. Maybe I have to go d5 instead and you play, I guess, knight c3 or something. Or knight c5, can you play that? Knight c5. White seems to be winning, says Tactical Magician. Wow, that's a strong statement, I would say. Uh, knight takes, if I take and I take... Can I take this pawn also, maybe? Or maybe, maybe I shouldn't. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't let you play that. Wow, we really drifted away from the position here. Okay, uh, maybe this was a mistake then. Maybe this was a mistake. Could you take on e5 Im immediately? Is that smarter or, or no? It doesn't look like it's smarter. Uh, Black has three pawns. Yeah, definitely. But uh, they found some counterplay here for white. I must say this looks very natural to take and take. Let's check it again. And rookie too. Very good move by L. Getting ready to... To unpin the knight. Are we missing something here? C5 maybe also. Touching that pawn. Is that making sense? Or, or that's a silly move? Uh, yeah, maybe not enough. Yeah, I don't know. C5 looks a little interesting. I don't know what, what you guys think. Could I play that maybe? Try to attack this pawn maybe? Makes a draw, says RKDK. Yeah, I don't know if it makes a draw. But I, I would play that, yeah. And hope it's enough. Uh, knight C3, says Heuristic Mind. All right, knight c3. I would have to take and take next turn. If I can eliminate that pawn, that's really beneficial for me, right? You take and I take. Yeah, what happens here? I must be close to making a draw here, no? Rook a1, okay. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Long story. Is this better than the game? Uh, there is some tactic here also, cheap tactic, right? Bishop there and rook e3. You, you, you check that, uh, L? Or that's not not an issue for you. Uh, or you will play something else first, like king f2 maybe. Queen e5 instead of trading queen, says Sartak. All right. Interesting that this is like a strategy exercise, but we're actually only talking tactics here. Queen takes e5. Yeah, maybe. He will move the queen, I think, here. He'll move the queen somewhere, like queen f2. But now you have, I understand, now you have big pressure on this uh, um, file, maybe. I don't know, actually. Yeah, not so clear. D5, I can go knight c5. If you, this is not... A, I don't like that position, for sure. For, for black, I mean. I don't like that position. The, the, the queen is very strong. I hope you see what I mean, guys. Material might be equal here, but the nature of the battle here is not in black's favor, for sure. The queen is very powerful in this kind of position. So, yeah, we should not play like this. I think queen takes it might work anyway, says Torich, says 
So you're saying this works. Do you want to play something else here, Tori, at this point? We are all ears if you can find something better here. Rook takes e5, rook e2. <laughs> okay, what did we miss here? I remember the position wrong. Well, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think maybe uh, L has a point that this can be played by white. And maybe white can have a small advantage here. I think that's, that's a fair statement. But uh, I think in the game he got a bigger advantage. So I will uh, actually, I will prefer what he played in the game. I like it more what he played in the game. He played knight c4. That's what uh, RKDK was proposing. Yeah, so now we don't have to care about this. Now this doesn't work anymore because the queen is protecting. I think this is way nicer than the line that we looked at. Because now you can see that after pawn takes, how do you take, take back here, of course? Uh, exactly, uh, RKDK with that pawn. Then he put the knight on d6 and he had a very nice advantage. Yeah, we can look. I, I don't think we have to look at the whole game, but it went like this. King Queen b6, queen h4. This is how the game went. And white went on to win. Yeah, something happened, guys. I don't know. Some connection problem. So that's what happened in the game. I hope you're convinced by how Mishra continued in this game. Look at what he achieved, starting from this position. It's clear what he had in mind. He wanted to use his pawn majority on the king side to get a better grip on the position, push those pawns forward. Uh, now I'm all... Uh, Really? All right. Can you hear me or problems with sound and so on? Uh, it's okay. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I I don't take the blame. I don't know what happened. So in any case, this is uh, what we were looking at uh, Mishra's game, and uh, we were saying that it was important to play. Uh, f4 here to play e5 and try to put the knight on d6, right? That's what we were talking about. Uh, review, yeah, uh, sure, we will look at this again. So we had some other options here. Some people said bishop c4, like a tactics uh, exercise. I think I can go knight takes e4, but I'm, I'm happy to hear your opinion here. Maybe I missed something. You will take and you have, was it maybe something with this move? Is that so? That's maybe what you wanted to play, right? Oh, I can understand that. And then queen f3 and take on e4. Yeah, very clever, very clever. So maybe you can play bishop c4. Yeah, I cannot play d5 because I'm hanging my queen, right? So, yeah, what should I play here after bishop c4? I have to move the rook, I guess. Exactly, heuristic. Yeah, rook e7 looks like uh, it's possible. No, or am I missing something? And now, yeah, what's, what is my next move here? Actually, I don't know what's my next move. Uh, with black, I mean. Why not 94? Yeah, we were talking about that. I, I don't know. Uh, I was saying maybe this is what people were saying and and something like this. And it was not so clear. Black seems to be losing material. Or am I missing something? Knight h5 and d5. Knight h5 and d5. Oh, knight h5 here. Wow, that's a fantastic move. I understand. But I can maybe go like that then, right? And you can't go d5 anyway. <clears throat> Rook g6. Oh, so you go for an attack now. Interesting. Well, um, maybe, maybe. I We can't really ignore it, now. White has some initiative here. Bishop h3, queen takes, knight f4, things like that coming up. Knight takes, knight f4, I mean. Aha. Uh -huh. Maybe queen a7 also targeting the pawn. Yeah, not completely clear. Bishop, bishop, oh, sorry. Bishop e2 says Tori. So if I take on h3 what's going on in that case that's not possible i suppose not that i can see these tactics clearly uh, then queen takes h5 okay pop fisher we will come to your move yeah i don't know what what happens here i don't know what's going on in this position yeah maybe white is better i don't know but i don't know the, the, this piece is a little unstable i don't know can i bring in the queen or something white is better yeah yeah maybe maybe uh, so you're saying bishop c4 Rook e7 and 
Yeah, but we were saying Rookie 7. That was what we were saying, right? Instead of Knight H5. I think you can play like this with Black also. I'm not cl not clear to me what's, what's White's... Uh, what's the big deal here for White? Maybe now we can prepare something like Bishop B6 and trade off the Bishop or something. So, not so clear. Not so clear what's, uh, what's, what's going on here. Or maybe Bishop C8 so we can play D5 and we have the Queen protected or something. Well, maybe not. But, okay. Uh, yeah, very complex. So Pop Fisher is uh, telling us that there is another way to play. E4, E5, sorry. E5, D takes E5, and Knight C4. That's what Pop Fisher wants to play. Okay. But Misra didn't play like this. Oh, you want to play D takes E5 first? But then I can take, right? Or what am I missing? You're mating me? No. I don't understand Pop Fisher. I can take with the queen here. I'm not getting mated, no? And what else can happen to me? Yeah, I don't understand. I, I'm definitely not getting mated. I can always come back uh, with a rook, for example, and I should be okay. So e5, you will have to play in that case knight c4. But is this really so promising for black for white? Um, maybe we can use this move again, the knight h5 move that you were talking about, and play knight f4. I don't like this so much, this variation for white, to be completely honest. I think like black is better coordinated also, more active than white. So I would uh, definitely go for what Mishra played. <laughs> I would play the same way, f4. I like this way of playing. And then the queen comes to f2, and we get ready to install the knight like that. So, OK, maybe we could continue and take another one. Let's uh, look at the King's Indian battle. We have with the white pieces Badelka and playing black is Ivich. They arrived at this position. Yeah, you can see it's some kind of King's Indian. So I'm basically asking you here what we should do with the white pieces. Uh, I don't know. Maybe the second move is, is difficult. Uh, yeah, I think I'll just quiz you for the first move then. Uh, or the second move. Yeah, the second move. All right. So what should white play here? You only need to find two moves this time. That's a very surprising move, uh, Wyatt. Uh, you're inviting my knight back to the game, no? The knight was not doing anything. Is this tactics or is it strategy? Yeah, that's the big question here. Interesting, interesting plan. Minority attack. Wow, g4. You, you are definitely brave players if you play g4. Don't forget that I can use the h file. All, all of those who said g4, careful that black is entitled to use the h file. More time. What's wrong with the flexible a4? No, nothing really. This is strategy. Uh, yeah, RKDK and Tiger Saki, you were closest. L also very, very close. Aha. Uh -huh. Uh, yeah, who should tell the move here? Yeah, uh, so some people got it right. Nobody played exactly like in the game, but you were definitely on the right track here. So many different possibilities here. Uh, yeah, L, you can show us again then what was your solution. White played knight c2. We're talking strategy here. There was no uh, knockout blow that white could deliver. They are simply interested in bringing the knight to the juicy square on e6. The knight was good on e3, but it's even better if you put it on d4. Um, if you play g4 here, uh, some of you were saying this, you will have to explain to me what's what's going to happen after rook h8. Um, any King's Indian player would, <laughs> would blitz out that, I think, here. So this is, I understand the point to open up the black king side, but you op also open up the white king side. So this looks very scary, uh, right? Uh, then you had many other moves here. A4 was proposed by some people. Yeah, this looks very clever to play A5 and some kind of minority attack. I'm not sure what black would play in this position. Some kind of blockade. I don't know what's... I don't even know. Bishop H6, that must be my next move, right? Bishop H6 targeting this pawn, trying to play Rook G8 maybe. You would have to defend it in some way. G3 maybe. Uh, yeah, what would I play here? King's Indians are very tricky. Uh, what is black trying to do here? Yeah, very complex to play black here. Rook c5, maybe. Can I play that? Try to play knight c7? Well, not completely convincing, no. Um, so a4, yeah, we can we can agree that that's, that's also possible. Yeah, looks 
perfectly fine. Hard to play this position with black. I think black is already under serious pressure. The knight should go to easy. I think so too. I think there are many good options here. A4 is not bad. That's what happens with strategy, that you can have multiple good choices. Maybe I should play this move then. Yeah, just to fight back against all of those who say A4, I will play rook C5. Okay. What did you want to play next, uh, Sarthak? Yeah, you can have the, the move, Sarthak. Show us, show us. What was your idea here? What did you want to do? A5, says Sarthak. All right. I guess I can take once and take twice. Uh, if I take like this, you can take like that and you can play D6. I don't know if that's troublesome for me, I think. So I should not allow that. Yeah, what do I play now? My whole point was to take on <coughs> or B5 and take on A5. I don't know. Can I get away with that or, or uh, am I getting killed here in this position? Queen A4. All right. Yeah, how do I make this work with black? But the, the good thing is that you're not targeting this pawn anymore, Sartak. That, that's like a small victory for me, but not, not so big, of course. Um, yeah, I don't like this position. Maybe I should just crawl back with the king. <laughs> I think I'll have to do that. And if you take the pawn, I'll play rook f7 and I'll pretend that I'm still okay here, but I might not be. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Maybe queen d8. All right. I can see the cheap tactics. I'll play like that. Okay, uh, we can agree this looks promising also. Knight c2, so now you do it. Now, now, now you like the plan. All right, King's Indian players will play e3 and knight e4 here, but I think it's a little too too dramatic, right? Um, you're hanging this pawn also, Sarthak. Are you... No, I'm hanging the knight. Yeah, you're right. Okay, Sarthak, we shouldn't argue about this. You're probably doing fine here uh, in this position. And I'm happy that in the end you actually picked up the right idea. So that's what they did in the game. Yeah, let's go back to the game. Uh, he played, oh, I mean, sorry, she played in the game, knight c2. That's what she played in the game. After bishop h6, uh, you can defend the pawn in different ways. L defended it like that with the pawn simply. Queen d2 was also thinkable. Uh, Badelka played in the game. Uh, yeah, she didn't want to give away this. I think if you play like that, some of you were saying this, but I think I will take, and I'm happy to give away the exchange here. Uh, yeah, how can I do that? I'll put my bishop on e5. I don't know if you agree on that. Bishop e5. I'm very happy if you take my exchange now. That's a good trade for me, I think. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, it's good for me to have this bishop in the center, I think. Maybe bishop takes f6 here. Yeah, I have to be very careful. I understand this pawn is hanging. Take with the king, I think. King's Indian players, if you're not brave, you're playing the wrong opening. Now I have some counterplay here, maybe. Uh, yeah, I don't think white should go for this. Queen e1 says L. Okay, L will back on track here. Queen. Oh, this this was hanging also. I didn't even see that. Sorry. I'm a little slow here. Slow brain. Uh, rook. Uh, yeah, where would I put my rook? Rook h8 maybe. Or rook g8. Yeah, rook g8 perhaps. Oh, it's queen h4. It's Sartak who's moving. Oh, sorry, L. It's Sartak who's playing here. So if Sartak is playing, then I should play bishop g3. No, I'm just joking. Then you'll play queen c3. Yeah, actually, I don't know what's going on here. Um, Maybe black is in trouble still in this in this game. So interesting, interesting plan. Uh, give up the pawn. But even nicer, I think, what she played in the game, just queen c1. Very simple, not making things too complex. And later on, the knight came to e6 with a big effect. Yes, Torre Chess says bishop g3, knight takes f8. That's in the other variation, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I know what you mean. You're hitting the, the queen. I couldn't play that. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. That's why I didn't want to play. Uh, how did we get here, by the way? Something like this, bishop takes f6, king takes f6. Yeah, this this was f fortunate for me that I could play like this, right? But if you play queen e1, I should just make... Yeah, I cannot play this. This is what Torre Chess is saying. Yeah, I cannot do that. I should just move the rook somewhere. Uh, but then there is this check to worry about. So I guess I have to play... If I have to defend this position, well, poor, poor me. Um, yeah, what would I play, though? Maybe I made a mistake here. I should have taken with something else on f6, maybe. Take with the queen, maybe. But then you can take on h5. Take with the knight. Why don't we take with the knight, guys? Why nobody said that? Wow. That's a different story, no? Yeah, sacking the pawn is practically unnecessary. I like that comment by L. I like that comment. Why on earth would you enter, enter this with... with uh, it's like a... Like a labyrinth with, with, with white to play this position. Yeah, I'll play something like rook c8. Okay, you can have the change. It's on the house. 
I think this looks fantastic for black compared to what happened in the game. Why would you enter this if you could simply uh, protect the pawn? So uh, that would be my final call here. Knight c2, bring the knight to the right square, to the outpost, you could say. You can protect this pawn in a few different ways. This is what I played in the game. But it's also okay if you play g3. I wouldn't gamble that pawn. Okay, last thing here. Some people said bishop takes f6. Why would you play that unless you think it's a tactical exercise? Because I will take with the knight. What did you gain from that? You invited back the knight to the battle and you weakened your dark squares. That makes so, no sense, right? That makes little sense. So, yeah, I'm just telling you that some people are saying this piece of takes f6, but it doesn't make sense from a common sense uh, perspective. White's bishop is good and black's knight is, is, is not so good. So, all right. I hope we, we can agree on this. We, we should continue. So, simple strategical idea, bringing the knight to the outpost. All right. Let's take our next example. The next one will be very simple, so you will get only... 30 seconds. The next one is about the King's Indian. This one is easy for you guys, so 30 seconds will be enough. You can smell the solution here already. Some of you I'm convinced, so uh, here we go. Okay, you get one minute, yeah, so that you don't uh, get angry after that. <laughs> I'm sorry, JM Chess, RKDK, you're too fast, you're too fast. You saw the idea, but you're too fast. You have to do something else before that, all right? You must do something before. Uh, JM, uh, Patriot, Southak, you're on the right track, but you're missing some tactics here. Don't forget that my bishop is hitting your rook, right? So you can't really do that. Okay. So take your time, guys. Take your time. It's, it's not some elementary tactic, okay? Uh, you need some... Do some brain activity here, brain work to, to make this work. It's not as simple as that, okay? Okay, if you go a4, I will go b4 for sure. That would be like a strategical idea, maybe, to put the knight on b3. But you're hanging the exchange, I think, in that line. <clears throat> okay, who was closest here? Wow, I think we have arrived at the historical moment that we will have to do a requiz. Yeah, requiz coming up because nobody got it right. Aha, yeah, we will requiz. Uh, I can give you a little hint, no? Something's going on, okay? Something's going on on B3. But don't forget that I have some resources also, okay? Now we will do it again, but I assure you that this is the last time that, that we do it. Then you won't get any more chances. So, uh, second and last chance. Okay, good luck. Okay, RKDK, you found it already. Nice. Can King Sam, L008, Smart Goldfish. I think you looked in both directions, right? You looked at the king side, you looked at the queen side. You didn't limit your vision to just one tiny part of the board. Tiger Saki, you got it. Al Morris, congratulations. So, second time, it was simpler, no? <laughs> JM Chess, good work. Wow, it's, it's funny that almost all the moves take place on the queen side. Except the correct move, right? <laughs> knight takes b3. If knight takes b3... What would be the difference there? Okay, we will talk about that. Maybe that's okay also. I didn't think about that. Maybe. But it looks nicer the other way, no? Knight xp3, I can maybe ignore it, no? Could I take on e4 maybe? Or that's... No, maybe not. Okay. Sure, we will talk about that, heuristic mind. Let's see here. Legendary goat. Uh, please go ahead. Show us how should black continue here. Very surprising move if you were, how would you say, uh, if you were only focusing on the queen side, it's hard to see this move f4. Why on earth do they play there? The, the action is on the queen side. Well, there is a little detail here. What the legendary goat has noticed is, this, is that if we take on b3, um, like this, for example, white will have a counter resource, right? They can save this rook in a good way. They won't play like this, of course, because they know that in that case, they are getting mated, right? Instead, they will exactly they will take on c5. So they can take on c5 and they are basic oh sorry, mouse slip. They are basically breaking black's heart here by taking on c5 because now there is no mate anymore. And likewise, if you play here in this position, yeah, sorry, legendary, just one last 
look at this. Knight xb3 will not make sense as long as black, as long as white can take on b6. Uh, so we have to include this move first so that we <clears throat> make white uh, commit the bishop. So if it, you can't take like that because you're hanging the knight, obviously. And if you take with the bishop, yeah, please go ahead, uh, legendary. Now we take on b3, and when I take back, there is simply no bishop takes c5 anymore. So this is just hopeless for uh, for them. Yeah, we will come to that uh, hollow blade. So yeah, this is basically the solution here. You can see that we will take on b3. This is not working because, yeah, we saw this already. We saw the mate. It's not about material here. It's about mate simply. Okay, now what about questions here? If bishop takes c5, then it becomes more of a strategical exercise, you could say. Now we will take back simply, and white has big troubles coming up on this side. If I take on e4, for example, what would you play, uh, legendary? If I play like that, which move do you like for black here? I know which move I like, but I would like to hear your opinion. Exactly. That's, that one looks very tasty. No? A4, and we have some threats like rook, b2 maybe. Queen c3 is another candidate, for sure. That's another interesting move, queen c3. Maybe that's even better. I don't know. Try to play that. I don't know. Can I play rook c1 and try to play rook c2 maybe? A4, oh, sorry. A4 has like a nice nice touch to it. No, I think this cannot be wrong. Open up the game a little more. Um, yeah, c4. Yeah, b4 I think we can take. And now I think this move is stronger. No, because now we're also targeting this pawn and we have maybe this in the pocket and so on. So this looks dangerous for, for white, I think. Um, yeah, what uh, else? What about bishop a2 and move 2? All right, all right. We will talk about that. So if you play f4, bishop takes and bishop a4. Well, first question, can I take or am I missing some primitive tactic here? Uh, knight takes a4. Oh, I see, I see. So you want to infiltrate on c3. Wow, I cannot take like this because you go rook b2. So I have to play like that, I suppose. And when you take, when you play knight c3, I was going to sack here. Can I sack or it, I'm getting killed if I sack? I take and I play rook c1, right? Yeah, I can see this quickly. I shouldn't allow you to check me. King b3? How can you play king b3? Uh, I don't follow. Oh, after knight c3? I didn't see that. But this looks okay also for white, I think. I'm smoking out black's queen, no? Uh, or is this wrong for some reason? Anyway, yeah, you're saying that you can just play king b3. Yeah, you're good with this stuff, guys. I wouldn't uh, see this move. But I think you're right. Yeah, maybe a4 and take on b6 is... Uh, are you sure the king is safe from b4? Uh... No, it's just scary. Yeah, I think so. At least in practical context, when you move the pieces, when you don't move the pieces, I mean, this is going to be very scary. I think I like my solution a little more. Just take on c3. But okay. Uh, oh, queen. Yeah, exactly. Queen d4, queen c5, heuristic. You're right. Yeah, walking into mating nets and storage is too scary, says L. What was the other question after knight? This looks like too fancy to me. What's wrong with knight xb3? Uh, knight on move two, knight takes b3 on move two. Yeah, good question. I was just thinking about that when I saw it. They didn't play like that. Yeah, what would be the difference here? But you're not having a, like a very big threat here, are you? If I if I take, you have knight c1. Is that so? But I shouldn't take, I guess. Uh, what should I play here? Okay, good luck in the tournament, L. Good luck. I hope you win the game. Uh, rook takes. You play bishop a4. Yeah, actually, I, I think it's okay also what you're saying. It's less forcing, but it doesn't seem to have any big flaws as, as far as I can see. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Rook takes b3 is more forcing, says Tori. I agree completely. This looks more forcing because this becomes more powerful also, I think. So, so basically what we're saying here is that black wanted to do something on the king side, on the queen side, but they had to include this move. No matter how white reacts, there is a price to be paid here. Uh, in the game, let's see. I can of course look up what they did in the game. I think in the game they, in the game they took on, uh, they took on c5, like some of you were saying, and they played bishop g4. This is how they played in the game. But Black said no, I don't want to trade that bishop, and they are going to reroute it. I think at some point, rook e1 and a4. That's how the game went, and White was in big trouble in this game, um, thanks to this very nice command of the. Uh, of the long diagonal. So, yeah, that's that was a nice move, F4. I think that's it for today, guys. Or should I bring up a last one? I can maybe bring up a last one if you like. You want the last one or, or should we stop at this point? It's up to you guys. Uh, whatever you like. Maybe you are all tired and so on. 
Last one. All right. I'll take a simple one then, okay? We'll take a simple one. Uh, you're playing with the white pieces this time. You don't get much time on this one. You don't get much time. So uh, here we are. Let's see if I can get this right. Uh, let's see here. Something like that. Okay. Uh, one minute. Why to play? Exactly, Pop Fisher. One minute. We're on the same track here. What do you think? Why to play here? Is this tactics? Is it strategy? Well, you'll have to find out yourself what's going on here. Is there some kind of tactical solution or should we look for something more strategical? Uh, okay, tactical magician, you're very, very close. We can refine your variation, I think. We can refine it. Um, if you think about how you can improve that, that last position, you will notice. But else you're very close, uh, tactical. Uh, nobody else is close so far. By now you know the best move, probably, tactical. Yeah, it's good we brought up this example because it touches upon another facet of strategy, you could say, that we didn't look at today. Uh, so that's great. Okay, JM and Pikachu, you're on the same track as Tactical Magician. Uh, I don't dislike what you're saying, but there was something stronger. JM Chess, you got it. Congratulations. That's a nicer way to carry out that idea. Please go ahead, uh, JM Chess, and show us what's uh, going on here in this position. What should White play? We are facing the IQP, the isolated queen spawn, so it makes perfect sense to trade off pieces. Uh, this is a good move. Also, you could say that in some way, maybe white king is slightly more exposed than black, so it makes sense to trade queens. Uh, black didn't want to trade queens. This would be ugly for them. You can see that actually white's bishop is much stronger than black's. If black's is not doing too much, white is very nice, nicely posted on this diagonal. Maybe you can play even, it's contradicting what I just said, but maybe you could play bishop d4 trying to help the rook to enter on c7 also. In the game, they played here queen d6. Please continue, J on chess, knight f5. That's, of course, unpleasant for black. And here, you had to be a little precise at this moment. Exactly. Some of you were saying here, knight d4. Okay, that's half a point for that move. It's not bad, of course. It's just that there is something better. If you play this, I think maybe what black should do, they should probably take on d4. You have to take back with the knight, I suppose, so that you don't lose your knight. And I would try something like queen e4 and try to be a little scary here. I don't know if I'm really successful with this, but that's probably what white wanted to avoid in the game. Uh, so in the game, they played instead what uh, JM Chess is saying. Bishop takes f6. So you see, there is actually some tactics in this also. You see what I mean? Because we're hitting the rook. We don't have time to take that, which black would like strategically. And if I take with the queen on f6, what would you play here very quickly, JM Chess? That was the whole point of Bishop takes f6. So you see, he's actually using some tactics also here in the strategical play. Uh, so after Bishop takes, Black had to play the move, which, yeah, makes me cry, this next move. But yeah, that's what he played. Hopeless now, 94. White had a huge advantage and they went on to win this game. Uh, Bishop takes, Knight takes, Queen e4, King d1, and White, yeah, White went on to win without much difficulty. Bad, bad weaknesses. Uh, G takes f6. Yeah, that's what happened in the game, so... Uh, nice. I hope you agree with this, guys. Uh, it was a good moment to trade queens. Trades, a very important part of strategy in chess. But it actually led to some tactical complications also. So in a way, you could say that these two were kind of connected. So thinking in both directions, very important. Thanks, everyone, for showing up today. Thanks to Chess Dojo, to Chessable, to Greg Shahadi, um, to uh, USCS. Thanks and see you next time.